Hi guys, it's April and I garden down in Southeast Nebraska, zone 6A, formerly 5B. And this is another garden tour. I honestly, I have no idea how many more of these are left. This might be my second to last, if trends follow the way they normally do around here. Which means I am starting to remove a few things from the garden here and there but overall it's still been really warm and so we're still really really green we haven't had like much of any rain for the last month month and a half in fact we're technically considered to be in a drought right now with how little water we have gotten so i am hand watering from my rain barrels that have filled up throughout the season and now I'm hoping <laughs> hoping to uh, use up the water before I have to just dump it all so this doesn't freeze. Not sure why I went on that tangent, but I did. I think it's just really early and my brain is pre-coffee. So um, I'm just gonna show you the garden. Right now I pretty much always start with a Delupa plant because Look at all those loofa, loofa. You can see <laughs> loofa just dangling everywhere. We even got a whole bunch of them over here. Just, just dangling. So I had to show those off. But this is the backside of that trellis that I normally show you. And I forgot to mention, I did plant runner beans on this trellis and every once in a while I can find the vines, but I don't think I got any actual beans. So that was a fail on my part. See, you can, you can see the bean plant right here, but I have yet to find an actual bean. So yeah, but otherwise, the funny part is, I've got sweet potato vines just hanging out right there. It didn't go forward, it went backwards. So that's fun, so I can get out of here without knocking my head. And this is one of the rain barrels I was telling you about. I have two. You can see I've got a bunch of loofah all over the ground. And then if we come around here, I haven't been pointing this out either and I thought I'd point it out today. One of the volunteer tomato plants is all the way up here at this point. And it's that bumblebee cherry tomato and I haven't actually gotten any tomatoes off of it but it's ginormous and I see a lot of green tomatoes it does look like that loofah right there is starting to dry out which is exactly what I want yeah. the loofah plant we've got lots of loofah on the ground lots over here as well these are the only plants that seem to recognize that it is fall. It, they have already lost all of their leaves. Those are the honeyberry. Over here is probably the biggest change. The corn is gone. Last week I pointed out that I took the ground cherry plant out. Ground cherries just weren't tasting right and the plant didn't look right so we just pulled it. But now the corn is gone. I'm still waiting on the beans to dry to do a harvest but there are some that are probably ready for me to start picking honestly there is not a lot of excitement happening in the garden I have been trying to trim the tomato plants here and there not that you can tell <laughs> This is the bunch 
that I need to get to next. I might do a little bit of that today. But I have been pulling carrots. I need to get rid of those dwarf tomatoes. I don't think I'm going to get anything from them at this point. The zinnias know that it's fall. And you're starting to see a little bit of the cold damage on this plant right here, the jelly melon. You can see some of it right there, but it's still going. It's still doing its thing. I'm waiting for these, not all of them, because this would be way too many seeds, but I'm waiting for a lot of these to just dry out so I can save the seeds from them because I have more than enough okra that we have eaten, are going to eat, and have preserved to eat over the winter. So I'm just letting that go. Over here is probably where you'll see most of my maintenance has been done, even though <laughs> the tomatoes still look like they just like flooped. But this whole area used to be covered, but I chopped that back mainly so I could get in here and continue to water the daikons, which now have a lot of their mature leaves, at least these two varieties the Bravo and uh, the Mini Mac. The Summit right here is struggling a bit. I don't think I'm gonna get any of those. I don't think they're gonna be big enough by the time the frost hits. Unfortunately, but I had to give it a try. I'm also just letting that prize potato continue to do its thing because I don't care. <laughs> it can have that space over there. Here's where you're going to start to see a lot of the bigger changes. As you can tell by the mess, I have started pulling out pepper plants. And so I, I'm either pulling out the plants that I don't want any additional peppers from, have really stopped producing and don't look good or have just been frost nipped and so have started to die back. So we've got um, a couple here that are gone and then about two or three in the middle that I pulled out as well. I am leaving the marigold plants there simply because I want them to reseed. So I'll let the seeds fall. But it's mainly the smaller peppers that are still producing right now. Here is probably where I'm going to plant next year's round of um, garlic. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word garlic. So I'll probably plant them here. Uh, I need to top this up a little bit more. So I might get some compost to put on top. So I need to put that on my list of things I need to do because my compost piles are new this year because of the construction of the bed. I had to tear out my old compost and reconfigure, so I don't have any home-produced compost, so I'll have to think about picking up some for there. All of the beds over this winter are going to need topped up because they have settled a lot. I put a lot of old sunflower stalks, at least in these beds in the back. so. This bed right here as you can see we've we've lost like three inches and then 
this bed right here, all three sections had a lot of the sunflower stalks and all of them have drastically settled. So I'm gonna have to top those up, but that's fine. And then as you can see, I have finally pulled out both the habanada and the savory peppers because I no longer wanted either of those peppers. I didn't want them to produce anymore. I was just done with them, so they are out. But I still have the natapinos, the cayennes, the jalapenos, and I've got a couple of these, the, the sweeter ahis. I did realize that I have a stuffing scotch which got shoved in the middle here that never actually produced any fruit and I think it's because I smothered it out. So next year I need to remind myself not to plant my peppers so close together because I did want to try that stuffing scotch. I don't know how hot it is at least according to my palate. So I wanted to give it a try. So I'll have to do that again next year. But as you can see, the peppers have decided that fall is not their weather and they are losing their leaves. I'm guessing the ahis are gonna be the next pepper to go. I did have a poblano here that I pulled out because it just, it was not happy. So I'm like, meh. And that's when I realized that the stuffing scotch <laughs> was in the middle there with no friends, not doing well. I'm sorry, I, I really overstuffed this bed. My bad. Overall, there isn't much else to be had. I mean, I showed you the loofah. I do have of course, the tomato plants and the pepper plants back here that are just hanging out. I harvested a bunch of peppers off of these plants and some of the other hidden pepper plants. So there's not a lot of fruit left on it. Oh, and this looks like a volunteer bok choy that has since started flowering so I might have lots of volunteer bok choy in this bed in the future which is okay but yeah this is the disappearing garden so nothing super exciting going on right now but I do have to start thinking about next year's garden which is why I'm starting to slowly pull out those peppers and I know I still need to try and dig up the sweet potatoes. I don't know why I keep avoiding that, but the temperature swings back and forth have just been really wild. So that'll happen probably sometime this weekend and I will show you the harvest of that sweet potato, which reminds me if you want to see some of the daily harvest and daily preparations of the harvest. I do have an Instagram and Threads account where I usually post those as they're happening. So you can follow me over there. But if you want to continue to see how this garden is put to bed and how I start planning out next year's garden, feel free to subscribe down below. Do all the things to get all of the notifications. But that is my little garden as of the middle of October, almost the middle of October don't have much time left. It's been a, it's been a good year. I do hope I will see you again in another video and I heart your beautiful faces. Bye.